thank you so much uh, for giving us this time this morning, Ange. So let's get to it. I mean, less than three months into the role, has Premier League football been everything you ever envisaged? Uh, look, I, I guess so. I mean, I, my expectations going into it are pretty much the same as every other role I've got into. You kind of understand there's a challenge before you. And, uh, you know, whilst people, um, you know, I guess particularly over this side of the border are, are fairly infatuated with the Premier League, it's still a football club I need to take over and do, you know, the things I've always done, um, you know, what I did at Celtic or in Japan or in Australia. Um, but it's been great uh, in terms of me just being able to sort of get my feet under the desk and start working in the way I want to and, and sort of getting people to buy in. So it's um, been enjoyable so far. Good to hear. I mean, have you had any big surprises so far in the job? Anything taking you by surprise? What's been the biggest challenge, would you say? No real surprises. As I said, it's still it's still football. I think if you, if you can sort of um, take away all the... The, the general sort of um, scrutiny that's around, uh, particularly around the Premier League, but in every role you have, um, nothing really surprising. Um, the challenges are, as I said, as expected, every time I walk into a role, you, you, there's a reason I'm here, you know. If, if things were going well, I wouldn't be here. Uh, you know, that's most managers will tell you that's the reason you come in. And with that, you go in with your eyes wide open and expect it to be tough, um, and, and it will be. You know, we're just very much at the beginnings. We've had a encouraging start, but uh, still plenty to do. And when you looked at the opportunity of Tottenham, what was it, I mean, I'm not just, obviously, because they asked, right? But what was it about Tottenham that made you want to join them? A lot of people have this perspective of Daniel Levy, of the challenges that Tottenham Hotspur have had, the fact that they haven't won any trophies. You've come in from from the background with a lot of noise about what you've achieved at Celtic, and justifiably so, because I think you did a brilliant job. Um, but Tottenham as a challenge, what was it that drew you to them? Exactly that, Simon. Um, I love a challenge. You know, I've done that through my whole career. That um, the, 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 I guess every step along the way, wherever I've sort of decided about when to move, and I've usually moved on the back of success wherever I've been, is because there's a challenge out there that really stirs me. As you said, first you've got to get asked, so it's, it's that's the first thing, and I was asked. Um, secondly, is you look at what you're going into and, and I think the fact that it is, for all intents and purposes, one of the biggest clubs in the world, but it hasn't had success for a, for a very long time was probably the key driver for me because I think when you go into a challenge like that, you know that should you be able to, you know, implement the things you want to and, you know, um, all things being able, it goes well. You you can make an impact and, and leave a mark um, on on the club you worked for, and that's what I've tried to do with all my clubs. So that's that was the biggest attraction for me. The the, the fact that the club hasn't had a lot of success, it, it kind of is coming off a, a particularly you know poor season, even by its own standards, and um, the opportunity there to create something. What's the challenge, mate? I mean, when you you you, you conceptualise a challenge in people's minds, some people would say it's to win something for Spurs. Others might say to get Daniel's objective of getting inside the top four. What is the challenge? The challenge is, for me, the same everywhere. To get the team to play a certain kind of football that gives its own fans and punters something to get excited about on a weekly basis and bring success to the club. There's no other reason I do what I do. Uh, it doesn't matter where I've been. I want to bring success to this football club, play in a certain way, um, that never changes. I'm, I'm uncompromising in that. And um, success for me is winning things. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, it's not a, a desperation around just winning something because I just don't think that's, you know, that gets you sort of the sustainable um, sort of opportunity to be successful. That for me, it's it's the roots of it, the foundation of it is just to play the game a certain way, which I believe brings success, but also excites, excites the punters. And as you rightly say, the challenge is to win things. And Tottenham fans desperately want to win something. But here, after you went out the Carabao Cup um, against Fulham, there were a bunch of Tottenham fans getting in touch saying, uh, you know, there, was, there was no drama, there, there was no crisis, but they were disappointed that you didn't field a stronger team that might have got you that win against Fulham and might have taken you deeper into the Carabao Cup. Who knows, you might have won it. Any regrets there? No, and, and I've, I've been at pains to say, and again, I've had it through my whole career, supporters should feel the way they feel. I'm not going to tell them 
you know, if, to not be disappointed or, or not. But as I said before, for me, I'm not in this job desperate to win something just to win something. I'm, I'm here because I want to create a club that has the opportunity to win things on a yearly basis. And there's a difference, yeah, because us winning a Carabao Cup and finishing 10th um, is not what I think this club's about. And that's not dismissing the Carabao Cup. You know, I, I, I want to win every game. Trust me, I wasn't, uh, I was disappointed on that night as well. But that's not the end game for me. It's not about just winning something for the sake of winning something. It's about building something. I mean, that's that's what's always driven me my whole career. I want to build clubs that are, have sustainable success and supporters going to every season, feeling good about their prospects and watching their team play football. And uh, we spoke a lot in this in this show about Conte and what he did or didn't do in his time there. We're not going to talk about him specifically, but he did say, "Look, this club doesn't have a winning mentality." And then he departed, and that annoyed you greatly, Simon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it still does. Uh, and what do you recognise around the place now? Is a winning mentality there? You're trying to engender that, aren't you? You're right. It's not. It's not my place to talk about you know the past or other managers because I don't think it's fair. And I've often said that um, you know, until you walk a mile in somebody's shoes, you can't really know what they're what they're dealing with. What I know is that again, for me, a winning mentality. It's it's a funny one. I grew up in Australia where we we love sport and we want to win everything, and we're a small nation and we're usually doing it as an underdog. So you kind of go into every contest being written off and then, you know, um, work, using that in your favour. But I think for me, a winning mentality is just you come in every day and you just want to be the best you can be. And it's got to be born from something else because there isn't a football club on this planet, there isn't a manager on this planet that does not want to win. There isn't a player on this planet that does not want to win. I refuse to believe that anyone goes into a game of football, irrespective of the odds they're overcoming, uh, need to overcome, not trying to win. My thing is... It's not just about the winning. It's about playing the game. You've got to believe in something more than just the victory because everyone wants to win. And for me, it's the way we play. That's what it comes down to. And what I've seen since I've got here is a group of players who are open to that. They've embraced that. It's challenging. Uh, It's going to test us. We're going to stumble. We're going to fall along the way. But when we get to where we want to and play the football we want to, the winning should take care of itself. Talk to me about the fit, Ange. I've spoken about the fit with you and Spurs and you and Daniel and the again I'll, I'll, I'll touch upon your predecessor but I don't ask you to comment upon them <laughs> I, I, I look at the reality of the fit for you which is the opportunity for you to go to Tottenham Hotspur was based upon it was a mutual advantage in terms of you wanted to manage Tottenham Hotspur you weren't doing them a favour and turning up and getting a big bag of money you wanted to manage Tottenham Hotspur and they wanted you as the manager whereas the predecessors perhaps were getting big reputations justifiably and turned up doing Tottenham Hotspur a favour talk to me about the fit of this particular decision making process of you going to join Tottenham and the working relationships you have with the key components of it like Daniel Levy look I think it's essential Simon and I think the reason I've probably you know, I've had success at just about every club I've gone to is because they've identified what they need in the next phase of, you know, whatever that, that club cycle is in terms of style of football, in terms of environment, in terms of all those things. And they, and a kind of, I, I come out as sort of the last man standing in that process. And, and when I see that, I know that this, the club is a good fit for me because the one thing about me is when, when I come in, I'm not going to compromise on certain things. I make that clear in the discussions we have before I accept the role. And it, when 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 the other party, whatever that may be, in this case, you know, Tottenham and Daniel decided to go with me, then I knew that they were open to, to going in my direction. And then it's up to me. You know, after after that, I, I'm I'm going to take responsibility for whatever happens here, good, bad, or otherwise. It, it's not going to, you know, if I don't succeed, it's not going to be because of you know, something that exists within this club or external factors because I haven't been able to do what I want to do from myself, you know. And, and, and the process for me now is about gaining the trust of everyone at the football club, the supporters, um, the people who run and, and, and own this club, the management, the players, the staff. That's up to me. It's all on me from now on. I think the only thing I ever asked for was that door to be opened and, and to be, I guess, supported, which I have been, and... And from here on, it's it's really down to me because I've accepted the role. I've accepted whatever challenges exist within this football club. I've accepted that, and I'll I'll take responsibility for that. And what would you say is the ceiling for the club in what is one of the most competitive Premier Leagues for some time? I don't 
they like ceilings, they like floors, they like uh, any kind of uh, impediments <laughs> that, that limit anything you do in life, uh, Jim. You know, from my perspective, it's let's see where it takes us. You know, I, I you know, when I started this off 26, 27 years ago as a manager, I left the bank to, to become a manager. I can tell you that there was probably plenty of ceilings that were put before me then and I'm standing <laughs> today and who knows, um, I, I don't work that way. For me, it's about trying to get this club to 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 the levels where I believe it deserves to be. It's got unbelievable training facilities, stadium support. It's got all the ingredients you'd ever want uh, to for, for a club to have success. My role within that is to try and manifest that into something more tangible in terms of on-field and give the, the punters and supporters something to be proud of. Um, so who knows, mate? We'll see what the whatever, – whatever the ceiling may exist, let's see if we can smash through it. I like that. You don't like ceilings. I love it. James Madison's already been lauded as one of the signings of the summer, Ange. Did well getting him, and he's made a great start. What can you tell Tottenham fans listening, and there are thousands listening, let me tell you, I can see it in front of me. I mean, is there more to come from Madison? Are you excited about Madison? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, again, that's, I guess, when you talk about support I've had since I've got the role. I mean, we signed James pretty early on in, in the piece, which was great for me. I mean, you know, we had competition from other clubs for him and, the, you know, the club sort of backed me early on um, to, to bring him in. I think what you've seen so far is we've, we've gained a player with, you know, outstanding ability, but also somebody who also is very, very driven to bring success to this football club. And I think... When you get both, um, you know, sometimes, you know, you get players at different stages of their careers. Um, but for, for James and, and the club, I think it's, it's, it's a perfect timing because he's, he's come here to make an impact, not just for himself individually, because I think he's already done that as an individual. He wants to make an impact for this football club. And, um, you know, I think for James and Madison, all the players, um, we're just at the beginnings, you know. Again, I, I don't say that to dismiss the fact that we've had an encouraging start, but... We've still got a long way to go in, in what we're trying to build and, and guys like Matters and, and Sonny and Romero, who are now the new leaders of this group, um, they're going to be, play an important role in that. Those are three, are they? Madison, Son, uh, Romero, do you see them as the leaders, some of the leaders in your squad? Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. it's important that, you know, a lot of it has to be player-driven, you know. I can, I can sit there and, and, you know, try and paint the prettiest of pictures, but ultimately they've got to buy into it. They've got to believe it. You know, it's their, I keep saying it's their dressing room. You know, they go into there every day. They don't go in the dressing room. The environment there is going to be key to us being successful. It's got to be driven by them. They're the, they're the people involved, not the players, the people who, yeah. who, who lead in there. And I think those three, um, along with others who, who we've got in the group, hopefully will, will, will drive that. And I noticed Messi this week, Ange described Romero as the best defender in the world. I, I I don't know. Is he that good? Is he is he certainly up there? Why not, mate? Who am I to argue with uh, with uh, with Messi? He's, he's. I'll tell you what. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to play against him. Most of the boys here don't like training against him. He's uh, he's a real competitor, and I love that about him. Um, you know, whether it's training or a game, what you see is 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 what you get with uh, Romero. Talk to me about Basuma. This is a player that was signed from Brighton that seemed to have been marginalised last season, didn't even get a look in. All of a sudden, he's a mainstay. What have you done with him? I don't know if I've done anything specific with him, Simon. It, with all the players, it's just, again, it's about creating an environment. And, you know, I, I, I put the responsibility on them too because, you know, you can sometimes when you've had a disappointing season, you can blame you know, the manager in the past or other things. But ultimately, I said to all the players, you know, it's about them now. You know, you never start with a clean slate, but you certainly start with an opportunity to... To take hold of your career and be the, you know, show me what you can do and, and be the best you can be. And Biss, I was lucky because he was here from the first day I arrived. A lot of the boys had, had played international football and Biss was here from the first day. And I kind of grabbed him and I said to him, the way he was training at the time was like the first three or four sessions. We mainly had young guys. Yeah, mate, you, got, you can be a leader in this group. The way, you know, I already knew about his ability, but the way he was training and I could see he, he got a lift in with that. He he was late the next morning, so then I said to him, to be a leader means being on time, and he's been good since then. So there's always lessons to be learned there. But, you know, I think with him and all the other players, it's about creating a, an environment, a framework to say, well, you should really have no excuses. You know, I'm not going to allow you to have any excuses and not be the best you can be. And within that context, then the rest is up to them. And it's just a couple of great points. Uh, Arsenal-Tottenham, 24th of this month. Are you looking forward to it? 
Yeah, um, Sheffield United first, mate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Game at a time, game at a time. But uh, <laughs> yeah, look, it's, it's it's a big game, and then look, you know, whenever I get stopped in the in the street these days, uh, that's the first fixture people talk about, whether whatever side of the fence they're on. So, yeah, it should be a great game. But um, like I said, I, I, I don't like international windows, mate. I, I've got to sit with my fingers biting my nails today because I've got about. You know, half a dozen playing in games today. So we'll get yeah. through that and focus on the weekend. What constitutes success then this season, Ange? Is it top four? Is it winning a trophy? What is it? Uh, you know, again, I I said at the start, I'm going to stick to that line. I reckon the supporters will tell me. You know, at the end of the year, they'll tell me whether we've been a success or not. Tottenham supporters, not opposition supporters. So, you know, they'll give me an indication. Now, what that looks like, who knows? So I'll, uh, uh, the one thing about me is that... Uh, like I said, I love winning and uh, hopefully at the end of the year we've, we've done plenty of that. Ange, we can't thank you enough. I know you're going out training now. From Simon and myself, everybody at TalkSport, thank you for this. I'm-